Hello friends, welcome to the Goals in Procloud Technologies. My name is Avinash Pujari and I am a trainer for SAN, IBM AIs, VMware Virtualization and the Linux with the Goals in Procloud Technologies. About me, uh, I have almost 10 plus years of experience in IT industry and uh, I am a EMC Certified Technical Architect and I am NetApp Certified Technical Architect. I have done the AIX certification also. And long back I did the uh, MCSA 2003 but I am no longer into the Microsoft field. So this video is specially uh, for the beginners in the SAN technology. SAN it stands for Storage Area Network and it is a network which provides the faster input output of the data with redundancy and of course it provides the space to store the data on top of it. Okay, so <coughs> storage area network. So, it is a network which provides faster input output of data with redundancy with redundancy and it also provides space to store data so as you can see definition is very simple and the definition itself we have uh, three advantages first advantage is the faster I O. so in a sign environment faster I O is the advantage so minimum 1 gbps speed we get with this and 16 gbps is available in today's rate okay but technology we have 128 gbps also so as per the survey of the one of the organization uh, companies are not utilizing the 4 gbps environment properly so there is no need of a 16 gbps actually but we have 16 gbps so if you want a 16 gbps environment uh, you will be getting a good performance but it, it is costly also then second advantage of this technology is the redundancy so redundancy means if one device goes down another device takes the control so in a redundancy uh, in a sign environment everything is redundant so we get a part and b part if a goes down b takes the control if b goes down a takes the control and uh, because of redundancy we can say we get the security also so because of redundancy uh, our data is secure and uh, at the hard drive level in a storage technology red concept is available where uh, one disk failure or two disk failure are allowed depending on type and then fourth advantage of this technology is space to store the data so of course it is the bunch of disk drives, is a collection of disk drives so where we can store the data so this is the advantage of this technology very simple to understand then fifth advantage of this SAN technology is n number of server connection server connection so n number of server connection means what there is one association with name SNI that is storage network industry association and as per the SNI definition, n number of servers we can register. So SNI is a vendor neutral organization who sets the rules and regulation for the storage manufacturers. So in the market, uh, different different models are available and depending on the model, uh, number of servers we can register with it. So right now uh, in market, higher end box is available that is EMC VMAX and with this box, 16,000 servers we can register so right now maximum limitation is 16,000 then sixth advantage of this technology is scalability SAN is scalable so as per our requirement we can add and remove servers add and remove hard drives and um, add and remove SAN switches also in a SAN environment so it is highly scalable so we can uh, <clears throat> buy minimum number of disk drives and we can grow big okay then the 
serverless backup serverless backup and eighth advantage is lan free backup lan free backup so when our data is stored on a sandbox we can connect our tape library directly to the sandbox and uh, it uses the fiber channel connectivity so because of fiber channel connectivity it is faster that's why lan free backup is the advantage and the serverless backup means our data is stored on the sand so to take the backup server resources are not required so server if you see the definition of the server is a machine uh, which provides services to the client and definitely backup is not a client service backup basically we use it for the uh, security purpose okay so serverless backup is also one of the advantage of uh, this technology then Here, ninth advantage of this technology is clustering, or we can call it as a high availability. So, to implement the OS level clustering, we require a SAN environment because it provides you the block level access, and uh, raw space is required for that. So, uh, without SAN, we cannot do the clustering, so, SAN is compulsory required. Then, Tenth advantage of this technology is block level access. Block level access. So, in a storage, there is a concept called as logical unit number, and uh, logical unit number is nothing but a collection of blocks actually. So, it collects the blocks and it creates the group of uh, those blocks, and we can present it to the specific server. So block level access is uh, one of the biggest advantage of this technology and why SAN technology is very successful in the market because uh, if you see uh, in today's date we can do uh, the transactions, we can do the uh, emailing from anywhere. Okay, So it is possible because of this centralized data management. Okay, So centralized data management. So centralized because of this uh, feature, SAN is widely used. Disadvantage of this technology is compared to any technology, it is costly. Compared to any technology, SAN is very costly. So if you have any doubt, you can comment on this uh, video and I will get back to you on that. Now let's see the uh, data center architecture, how the devices are connected to the SAN environment by using the fiber channel connectivity. So, let me wind up this. Let's say these are our client machine, that is end user machine. And uh, at this level, no doubt, Windows is the true leader. So, we get the Windows 8, Windows 10 operating system. Okay, and in some machines, you will find the Linux operating system also. So, uh, and uh, with the laptop and desktop, we don't have to order uh, Ethernet port separately. By default, we get that one. So, it goes to the LAN switch. So, we can connect it to the LAN environment. LAN environment by using the wired or the wireless connectivity. And no doubt here, Cisco company is the true leader in the LAN environment. Then. Let's say in a data center we have uh, five servers. And again, in a graphical user interface, there is no competition to the Microsoft. So, Microsoft Windows. After Microsoft Windows, AIX is the true leader in the production environment. Then Closest competitor to the AIX is the Linux operating system, which is almost open source. Well known operating system is the Solaris. And uh, in virtualization, VMware virtualization is commonly used. So, VMware is VM. Now, this machine goes to the LAN switch like this. Okay. So, if we don't have a SAN infrastructure, how we store the data? We install the OS on a local hard disk, okay? And we keep our application data 
on a local hard disk okay however if we want to get the all the advantages of a san technology we should connect it to the san environment now how to connect this one to the san environment so we require a special card to that we call it as a hpa card so uh, it's a host bus adapter okay so for redundancy purpose we require two hpa cards two hpa cards let's say this is h1 this is h2 and then here sign switches and the storage box in storage redundancy is there by default so it is divided into a part and b part and this is our sign switch sign switch sign switch and from a part connected to this from b part connected to this from a part connected to this from b part connected to this like that and then our H1 should be connected to this, H2 should go to this. So H1, H2, H1, H2, H1, H2, H1, and H2. Okay? So here, how it works? So install your Linux operating system on a local hard drive, okay, and keep your application data from the disk coming from the Send. So keep your application data over here. Okay, so this is the uh, best way. Uh, we can do the boot from SAN also here. So boot from SAN is nothing but uh, we install the operating system on our disk coming from the storage. So uh, this option, uh, that option is also available. And uh, if you connect, if you want to connect a uh, tape library to it, so this way you can do the connection. And this is our tape. Okay, so here fiber channel, fiber channel, fiber channel, fiber channel connectivity we use, and here it is Ethernet. So we use the IP protocol. IP, IP. Okay, so to this part, we call it as a data center, data center, or to this part, we call it as a SAN infrastructure also. SAN infrastructure also. And this is actually our LAN environment. So this way we do the connectivity. So uh, in our next video I will show the uh, connectivity how we do the actual connection between the devices. So we have actual data center set up and I will show you uh, the physical devices how we do the physical connectivity from server to the SAN switch and from SAN switch to the storage thanks for watching this video don't forget to subscribe our channel and you'll be receiving a lot of good videos from us thank you in this session we are going to see how red technology works basically red it stands for redundant array of independent disk for that i have created one notepad over here to uh, give you the detailed information about it. So you can see that uh, red it is redundant array of independent disk and the simple definition of this one is it is a collection of two or more disk drives to achieve high availability of the data. In SAN technology uh, we get the redundancy at the data level because of the red technology. So it is very important to understand this red concept. So to configure red concept or a red technology we have to follow two important rules. First rule is all participating disk in a RAID should be of same type and second rule is all participating disk in a RAID should be of same size when we say same type and same size why it is required let's see that so different different type of disk are available in market first one is the IDE second one is the SATA SATA 2 SATA 3 NLSAS SAS and SSD in storage technology nowadays NLSAS SAS and SSD disk drives we get so with the NLSAS 120 input output per second we get with this SAS drive we get the 180 input output per second and with SSD we get the 4000 input output per second so you can clearly see that SSD drives are very fast okay so if we try to combine the NLSAS disk drive and SSD disk drive in the same RAID we will not be getting a good performance from that RAID or uh, this NLSAS 120 input output per second is the limitation for the entire RAID 
and all participating disk in a RAID should be of same size. Reason is, if we try to combine 100 GB disk drive and 500 GB disk drive in the same RAID, 100 GB disk drive will be the limitation for the entire RAID. Okay, so list size hard disk is always the limitation for the entire RAID. In RAID technology, different different types of uh, RAID available. So first one is the RAID 0. Let's see how it works. Red zero. Red zero. It is a uh, red zero. It supports striping and concatenation. Minimum disk drive requirement is two and maximum thirty two. So we get uh, advantages like hundred percent space utilization. It is cost effective, good read and write. And the disadvantage is there is no redundancy, no security, and no hot spare. Okay, you can ignore this one. Let's see diagrammatically. Here we have a red zero. Red zero supports the striping. So let's say data is divided into six parts D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6. Okay. And we have two disk drives over here. So while writing data, system will write D1 over here, D2 over here, then D3, D4, D5, D6. Suppose our disk drive provides us 7500 RPM. So by using the striping method, by combining two disk drive, we'll be getting 15,000 RPM. So of course, a good performance will be getting by using a red zero. It supports one more method that is concatenation. So concatenation, how does it work? It will write the data on first disk drive first. Okay. Once this disk drive is full, it will start writing data on a second disk drive. That way, concatenation technology works. Let's see mirroring, how mirroring works. So red one, it is mirroring. Minimum disk drive requirement is two. If you want to add a more hard drives, we have to add it into the even numbers. Maximum hard drives we can have in a red one is 32. Advantage of this technology is 100% data security because it mirrors the complete data on another hard drive. So we get a 100% data security. We get a good read. We can allocate a hot spare also to it. And yes, redundancy is available. One disk failure is allowed at a time. But disadvantage of this technology is 50% space utilization and because of this 50% space utilization it is costly and we get a slow write. How does it work? Let's see. So in a red one minimum two disk drives are required. Okay, let's say our data is divided into four parts. So system will write D1, D2, D3, D4 on first, first hard drive and then it will acknowledge Okay, in red one, uh, minimum two disk drives are required. And uh, let's say our data is divided into four parts, D1, D2, D3, D4. Once this data is written, uh, it will send the acknowledgement to the application. Once the acknowledgement is sent, it will be mirrored on a second hard drive. This way, it mirrors the data. Theoretically, red two and red four concept is also available. But uh, in a storage environment, we don't get red 2 and red 4 option because red 2, red 4, it works on a bit level and our SAN technology works on a block level. So in a storage boxes, we get the red 1, red 0, red 3, red 5, red 6, but we don't get red 2 and red 4. So we'll focus on a red 3 directly. What is red 3? It is striping with dedicated parity. For this, minimum disk drive 3 and maximum 32 disk drives are required. Advantage of this technology is one disk failure is allowed then redundancy we get redundancy with it so because of redundancy security also in case of three disk drives we get a 67% space utilization it supports the hot spare also it is cost effective concept and good read disadvantage of this technology is slow write and um, yeah there are more chances of failure of parity disk so because of this reason we do not uh, prefer to create the red 3. How does it write the data? Let's see that one. So in a red three minimum three hard drives are required. So let's say our data is divided into six parts D1, D2. After writing D1, D2 system will write parity bit on a last disk drive D3, D4 parity bit 
on a last disk drive and d5 d6 parity bit on a last disk drive you can see that data striping with a dedicated disk for a parity bit okay so this way it creates the parity now what is parity so parity it is the bit for error checking and error correction so in the event of a failure of a disk this will help us to recover the data in storage we use in storage we use raid 5 concept maximum uh, it provides typing with distributed parity actually it is a solution on a raid 3 issue so here minimum 3 disk drives are required and maximum 32 disk drives we can add advantage of this technology is one disk failure is allowed redundancy we get then security 67 percent space utilization in case of three disk drives Yes, we can allocate hotspot to it. It is cost effective and good read. Only one disadvantage is compared to other red like red zero, uh, we get a slow write over here. How does it distribute the parity? Let's see that. In red five, minimum three disk drives are required. So how does it stripe the data? You can see that D1, D2, and then p1 on a last disk drive d3 on a first d4 on third disk drive and for that p2 will be created on a disk 2 and d5 over here d6 and then p3 on a first disk drive this way it distributes the parity across the disk drive then last trade in a red technology is red 6 and red 6 it is basically striping with dual distributed parity minimum disk drive requirement for this one 4 and maximum 32 disk we can have in that Advantage of this technology is a two disk failure allowed at a time. This is the main advantage of a RAID 6 concept actually. So how does it write the data? Let's see that one. RAID 6. Minimum four disk drives are required. So D1, D2 on first two disk drive for that it will write parity bit on a third disk drive. And then P2 it is a copy of P1 actually. Okay. Then D3 over here. D4 on a last disk drive. P3. P4 so P4 it is a copy of P3 that is a parity bit then D5 on third disk drive D6 on fourth disk drive and for that P5 will be created and P6 it is a copy of P5 will be created on a disk 2 so this way it writes the data on four disk drives Hello there, welcome to quickly learn. Today we are going to see storage components. If you want to make a career into the storage technology, you should know storage is made up of how many components and which those components are. So let's get started. So in sans storage components, total 12 components are there. So storage is made up of processor, so in storage boxes, you will find Intel Xeon processor. Uh, you will take any vendor storage like EMC storage, HP storage or IBM storage or any other vendor storage, you will find IBM, you will find Intel Xeon processor inside of it. Then second important component is the memory that is random access memory, which is, we get into the servers also. So server level uh, RAM we get in the storage technology. Third component is very important that is ports. So in ports we get fiber channel ports, management ports and serial port. So what is the use of fiber channel port? Fiber channel port is required to connect our storage box to the SAN switch environment or to connect with the HBA. And um, from there a data transfer actually happens. Management port is kind of a Ethernet port where uh, we get a static IP address from the vendor and we can customize that one as per our requirement and by using that IP address we can access our storage box so generally in the storage box inbuilt applications are there which can be accessed by using that management uh, port IP address and the serial port is also there which we use for the additional troubleshooting purpose like if you are unable to access our storage box by using the management IP address we can use a serial port for the additional troubleshooting Let's move to the next slide. Then fourth important component is the motherboard. So 
So in storage box, of course, a lot of components are there. So we require a motherboard where we can fit all of our devices. So storage architecture is a redundant architecture. That's why in a storage box, we get two separate motherboards in processor A and in processor B. Okay. So in uh, upcoming videos, I'll be showing you how the architecture is. Then fifth important component is the hard drive where we store our data and in storage different different type of hard drive we can add. So it supports the SATA disk drive, it supports the SAS disk drive and it supports the SSD disk drive also. Then sixth important component is small form factor pluggable, short form is SFP. So we require SFPs to connect our fiber channel cable to the SAN environment. So SFPs are required in the storage boxes also, in SAN switch also SFPs are required. Now the seventh component is the operating system. In every storage box you will find its own operating system. So if we take the example of uh, EMC VNX, so it has a block operating environment. There was a old storage box EMC Clarion in that we used to get EMC Flare operating system. So it has its own inbuilt operating system to manage storage operations. Eighth component is the application. Now here is the catch like we get inbuilt application also or we get a desktop based application also. In inbuilt application in storage box itself we get the application which can be accessed from the management IP address. And in desktop based application we have to download the exe file and we have to install that one on our uh, laptop or the server level uh, operating system and then on the desktop application we can register our storage box and from there we can manage our storage. Ninth important component is the power supply. So yeah of course power supply we have to give and then tenth component this is standby power supply. So additional backup is required for the storage. So that's why standby power supply also compulsory we get from the storage vendor. Then 11th component is the LEDs. So LEDs, it shows the status of each and every component attached to the storage. So, you know, different different colors are there. So green indicates that everything is fine. Amber light uh, shows warning kind of thing. And then uh, if red light is there, that means something is critical in the storage. And 12th component is the fan. So fan is required for the cooling purpose. Okay. So storage is made up of all these 12 components. Okay. Now, let's see the specifications uh, available in the uh, Unity model. Okay, so let me tell you that this is the um, storage box from the Dell EMC and uh, different different models are there like you can see Unity 300, Unity 400, Unity 500, Unity 600. Okay, now we have already covered the components of a storage so you can easily understand you know the uh, difference and the specification. So let's cover this unity 300. So form factor is 2 U means 2 unit size we get over there. And storage processor, 2 storage processors, SPA and SPB we get. And in processor we get a Intel E5 series 2603, 6 core processor of 1.6 gigahertz. Okay. In other storage boxes you can see in unity 400 it is 8 core and 2.4 gigahertz and it is e52609 in unity 500 there is upgradation e52630 10 core processor and 2.66 um, 2.6 gigahertz processor in unity 600 uh, you can see e52660 12 core processor 2.5 gigahertz speed we get then ram Per SP, we get a 24 GB over here at 1600 MHz. Same we get with the um, uh, Unity 400 1600 MHz, but there is an increase in the RAM that is 48 GB. In Unity 500, we get 64 GB RAM, which provides us the 1866 MHz speed, and with Unity 600, it is 128 GB uh, to 133 MHz. Now, what is this minimum and maximum dry count? So, 4 and slash 150, that means 
minimum four disk drive compulsory we have to purchase if you want to storage if you if you want to buy a storage box okay so why four because first four hard drive contains the operating system of the storage so for that reason compulsory minimum four hard drives we have to purchase and with unity 300 maximum 150 hard drives we can add into the storage unity 400 minimum four and maximum 250 hard disk in unity 500 it is minimum four and maximum 350 hard disk and in unity 600 minimum four and maximum 500 and now here it is showing that maximum capacity in terabyte okay so it is showing that unity 300 supports the 900 terabyte space okay so what does that mean 150 into 6 terabyte single disk that is 900 okay same for this 250 into 6 terabyte single hard disk that is 1500 terabyte space will be getting then 3500 into 6 2100 terabyte space and then 500 maximum drive into 6 terabyte single hard disk size so 3000 terabyte space will be getting and maximum input output models uh, models we get here so 2 in 300 400 500 and 600 okay guys now you can see in unity they have a uh, all flash uh, storage area also available and here we have a hybrid storage also available now what does that mean now when we say all flash in this storage will be getting only ssd drive so it is made for the high performance okay and uh, in front of 300 you can see f is written that means it is all flash drive same for the 400f 500f and the 600f and here unity 300 you can have a sata disk also sas disk also and ssd disk also so it gives us you know uh, good performance and uh, some capacity planning also we can do uh, with the uh, hybrid storage okay and then you can see capacity wise and the performance wise how uh, we can use these models okay so from the dell emc uh, we get a unity virtual storage appliance which supports a 50 terabyte space so you can go to the dell emc site and from there you can download uh, this virtual storage appliance and you can create a virtual environment okay to map a space okay then this 300 and 300 f is available so with unity 300 2.4 petabyte maximum space we get then with unity 400 and 400 f 4 petabyte space we get then 500 f and 500 we get 8 petabyte space and with 600 uh, f and 600 we get 10 petabyte okay so you can see uh, here we get the capacity okay and the performance okay so with the higher end box we get capacity also and performance also okay so with every storage box we get a specification and once you understand the storage components then only you will be able to understand the specification so this is very important part to become a storage admin and uh, if intel launches a latest processor in the market you will be seeing you know latest storage series available in the market okay so in my next video i'll be showing you the architecture of the storage box stay tuned thank you guys this is our data center where we have AIX servers P5, P7 servers, brokers and switches and EMC storage boxes so complete physical data center we have to give you a total hands on experience on physical devices so with this P7 we have 4 processor 32 GB RAM and power H and power VM software and with the broker sound switch we have a complete connectivity of the fiber channel to the storage and the servers
can see that uh, this is a back end view of the storage here uh, we have uh, four fiber channel front end ports which uh, goes to the sand switch and from the sand switch it goes to the server and uh, we have a power supply given from the SPS so this is the SPS and uh, from the SPS we get approximately 45 minutes backup to the SPA and SPP same connection we get with the B part and with the server this is the HBA card connected from the storage it is uh, connected to the sand switch and from the sand switch it, is, it goes to the server hello there welcome to quickly learn today we are going to see how to manage storage box by using storage application in this video we are going to focus on emc unisphere application i have already downloaded and installed unisphere application on my laptop so let's open that one it's opening now Okay, so you can see this is Dell EMC Unisphere application and in the dashboard it is showing system health, storage health, storage capacity, tools, system performance and system efficiency. If you want you can customize this view by clicking on main menu and customize. So if you want to add additional view blocks over here you can add that one. Let me show you how to do that one. So if you want to add a system efficiency just select the system efficiency and this kind of view you will be able to see add view block and after clicking on this you can see successfully added add a row 4 and column 1 okay so this way you can add additional parameters into the uh, dashboard like system capacity here capacity tools system alerts system performance like this let's close this one and here you can see system efficiency has been added successfully if you want to customize it more if you want to remove this system health you can just click on remove and you can remove that one from dashboard same for the storage health also you can perform for pool also okay let me close this one and you can see our system efficiency is visible over here so this way you can customize your complete dashboard then let's move cursor over here view system status after clicking on this it will show us the system status right now everything is fine in the storage box so it is showing okay and this is unity 480f that is all flash array okay software version 5.0.0.0.5.116 is running and it is showing system time if you want more details about the uh, system you can click on view system details after clicking on this it will take us to the system view we are going to see the system view later so i'll go to the dashboard again okay then if any active jobs are running at the back end you can see it from here if you select this one you can see there are no active jobs running then if you want to see alerts you can see alerts from here okay so some warning messages are available here available over here like LDAP client setting on NAS server demo multi protocol are not valid within domainapp.com. Okay, like this warning and alerts you can see related to storage box. Then let's go to the setting which is one of the important option. So let's see one by one. Here in uh, software and licenses, you can see soft license information. Right now, here antivirus server integration, CIFS SMB support, data reduction. EMC proactive assist, fiber channel, storage analytics, file level retention management. These kind of licenses are already installed. You can see the issued date and the expiry date of the license also. If you have purchased any license, you can install it by clicking on install license and then accept the license agreement and click next. 
here you have to choose dot lic file okay and after choosing the correct file it will be activated let's close this wizard then software upgrades if you want to perform upgrade of the storage you can perform that one it's easy to perform that one you can download a new software uh, from the application itself you can perform that activity and once it is downloaded you can just click on a start upgrade and upgradation will be started then drive firmware if you want to upgrade the firmware of your these drives attached to the storage you can perform that activity also and you can obtain the latest firmware online here you can see now in da0 drive 0 sas flash is uh, there and firmware is eql3 and raw size is 1752 gb okay so complete information you get related to disk over here then language packs if you want to install additional language packs you can install that one and system limits okay so right now maximum NDMP snapshot count is 8 so this is system limit like this maximum backup file network interface count per NAS server 10 so these are the limitations available let's move to the users and groups okay so I'm going to give you the overview of this application okay because if you go in depth in all the option it will take three to four hours to explain you all those things so in my upcoming videos uh, i'll be covering all those topics in depth okay but in this video we are going to have an overview of the application how it looks and where all these options uh, we get okay those things we are going to see so user management if you want to create additional users you can create additional user over here admin is having the complete rights so role is administrator you can see also then if you want to add your storage box into domain you can add that one from here let's move to the management and in management you can enable ntmp synchronization you can have your ntmp server information added over here same way you can add your dns server information unisphere central unisphere ips you can add over here then remote logging fallback policy performance and encryption okay so all these uh, options are available in this management okay you can enable disable uh, things from here let's move to the storage configuration and in this you get important information in your storage how many disk drives are there uh, what is the capacity of it like 1.92 terabyte size flash 25 count we have uh, 7.668 terabyte size flash 15 count we have and 15.36 terabyte single uh, size flash total count is 6 okay so that information uh, we get from here then support configuration you can add proxy server information then Dell support uh, credentials contact information okay and uh, DMC secure remote services column services if you want to enable you can select this one and cloud IQ related <coughs> and cloud iq uh, related uh, settings you can perform over here okay then go to the access and access related stuff you can perform like chat settings then uh, ethernet information high availability fiber channel you can see uh, you know wwpn numbers of uh, fc port 0 uh, one two three that information is also available over here then routing vlans and isns configuration alerts so generate all full threshold alerts you can generate that one from here email and smtp settings you can perform over here and snmp okay great so then now from here we can change password and do the logout so those options are available then help option is also available over here okay let's move to the system view in system view it shows uh, unity 480f uh, status of it everything is fine you can see zero health issues and uh, how much power it is consuming and the software version of it in per sp we are getting four fiber channel ports okay so four are in use and here uh, 10 ethernet ports per sp we are getting 
okay so that information is also visible let's move to the enclosures there are two enclosures available in this storage a dp and a dia so dp means it is disk processor enclosure which is a combination of our service processor enclosure and uh, disk array enclosure okay so combining that one we call it as a disk processor enclosure in a rear view uh, we can see uh, the upper side is spb and the lower one is the uh, spa okay and uh, here uh, ethernet model information we get then these are the fc ports available okay same configuration is available over here ethernet port of spa and these are the uh, fc ports okay uh, here we get the additional Ethernet ports. Okay, so same additional Ethernet ports we get. Then let's see the front view. In the front view, uh, we have a disk available 0 to 24. That means it, it is a 24 drive DAE. Okay, if you click on this 0 hard drive, you can see uh, drive 0 and complete information related to the hard disk. This disk uh, basically, you know, maximum speed is supposed 12 Gbps and current speed we are getting. 12 Gbps. So 12 Gbps means 12 gigabit per second and capacity of the hard disk is 7007 GB. Okay. This way uh, we can read information related to the hard disk. Uh, these four hard drives are grayed out. So let's click over here and uh, additional information. You can see a disk in your system has been removed. The slot is empty. Okay. So these slots are empty actually. That's why this way it is visible. Then if we click on the top, then top view it will uh, show uh, of this unit storage box and uh, if you want to see you know complete image in one shot you can see this is spa this is spb and in spa uh, these are the memory models okay uh, same configuration is available with spb also then this is a dp cooling module this is uh, spb battery okay so like this, uh, you can see all the storage components. Let's move to the DAE part, okay? And in DAE, uh, you can see uh, this is our link control card B and link control card A. So this link control card is required for the expansion of the uh, storage by adding the additional DAE. You can do that, one, okay? Great. Then front view of this one this is also 25 drive dae if you click on any of the drive uh, you can see it is drive 22 and the complete information related to that drive you can get okay let's see the performance so in performance tab you can see cpu utilization file system utilization uh, then file system io same for the la uh, learn bandwidth and the learn ios okay and a real time chart also if you want to see you can see it from here okay so data is available here okay great then go to the service and in service tab you can see overview service task technical advisories and downloads so this is our unity 480F the system is operating normally everything is fine if you want to configure a column service you can configure uh, over here and you can paste that one okay we have already seen this one into the uh, you know setting option then support contract support credential all that information you can get once you verify your credentials and contact information if you customize this contact if you want to customize this contact information uh, you can give details like here I'm adding my details okay and uh, let's say uh, as and quickly learn dot in okay and the phone number over here okay double nine six two double and phone number here and rack location where this storage is available so let's say this is in India okay and I uh, then click on apply okay you can see at the back end that information is stored great then service task if you want to perform activities on your storage box or service processor a service processor b you can perform it from the service task okay so what type of services you can perform 
So here, uh, collect service information, their configuration, restart management software. So if your management software is not functioning properly, you can use it for troubleshooting purpose. Then reinitialize, uh, then change service password, shut down storage system. If you want to access your storage box by using the command line interface, you can use uh, select this enable SSH and hardware upgrade also you can perform. If I select this hardware upgrade, you can see hardware upgrade procedure may take up to 150 minutes. Some procedure will involve full shutdown of the storage system, halting of all IO services and physically replacing hardware components. Okay. So make sure uh, vendor is available with you to perform this activity and then only you will be able to perform that one. And if you want to perform separate activity on a storage processor A like, you know, reboot, reimage, reset, fold, you can perform that one. Same thing is available with the B part. Okay. All you need to do is just, you know, uh, select the option and execute and that will be executed. Okay. Then technical advisories. So additional KB information you can get from the technical advisories and downloads. If you want to download the archive file and go downs, you can download it from here. You just have to, you know, select this one and click on download. It will be downloaded on your machine. Now let's move to the uh, storage tab in that let's click on pools. So here we have two pre-configured pools available, dynamic pool uh, 01 and dynamic pool 02 in dynamic pool 01 it is 67.6 .6 terabyte and in pool 2 it is uh, 65 terabyte uh, free is a uh, 66.7 terabyte and here 64.7 terabyte okay and percentage used it is 1.3 percent and here 0.5 percent is used if you want to create your own pool just click on plus sign and let's say it is ql pool and description you can give like we are creating it for testing purpose only Let's click on next extreme performance tier. Okay, so SAS slash eight unused drives we have 35,000 GB capacity. Just select this one. So system will um, select which red five red configuration you want. And here system has selected red five. If you want to change that one, just click on change. And uh, red five, red six, red ten, all those options you can see. If you don't know what is red, I have already uploaded video. Uh, you can click on I button and uh, you can check that video to get more information about red. Right now, I am not going to change uh, this setting. Okay, so I am just closing this one. Click on next. Okay, we'll keep this setting as it is. Next. Next. And this is the complete summary. Let's finish this one. After finishing, you can see. Uh, 50% completed, 64% completed, 78%, 93% completed. Great, it's done now. Let's close. And our QL pool is available. If you want to perform additional activities on a QL pool, expand pool uh, option is also available. If you want to expand that one, you can perform it from here. Then, if you want to create a LUN uh, to map it to your servers, okay. You can configure it from here. All you need to do is click on a plus sign and that learn creation wizard will be opened and you have to provide the information. Already few learns are configured and visible over here. So let's uh, click on plus sign. How many learns you want to configure in this case only one. Let's say QL1 is the learn name. Okay. And I want to configure it from our QL pool. Okay. Size. Let's say um, only 50 GB and thin we want to create thin provision LUN. okay what is thin provision LUN? Uh, i have already covered that one in uh, previous videos so you can check those videos and data reduction uh, feature also you can enable so data reduction is basically if you want uh, compression and deduplication feature enabled for this one okay let's click on next and here uh, configure access to which server you want to give access I'll just randomly select a uh, couple of servers and click on OK and let's click on next whether you want to configure a snapshot for it let's enable the uh, snapshot creation every day at 1 30 p.m. okay and return it for two days that's next we want to enable the replication for this land so 
uh, yes or no select that one so if you select this one which type of rectification you want asynchronous manual or synchronous depending on that you can perform that one and then you have you have to configure the destination also over here okay right now i am keeping it disabled let's move to next and finish it is creating a run now 35 percent 60 percent 84 completed great so let's close it and you can see ql1 is available and we have mapped it to the host also okay same way if you want to create a file uh, file system you can create it from here okay you can create your smb shares and nfs share to mount it on your servers so smb shares are required to uh, create a file system for your windows machine and uh, nfs share to create a file system for your linux machine you can configure that one okay and already few of the file systems are visible over here you can perform that one so again i'm just giving you the overview of the application so uh, in our uh, upcoming videos i'll be showing you how to create this file system in detail let's move to the vmware tab and here if you want to create a, a data store for your virtual environment you can create a data store also same option click on plus sign and provide the all the information your data store will get created then here capability profiles protocol endpoints data store shares and virtual volume all that information will be visible okay in access let's go to host now in a host uh, uh, to map a learn to the server first thing is you need to register a host with the storage box okay so these uh, machines are already registered okay if you want to register your own machine just select uh, host and here you, you have to provide the, all the information like host name then operating system then network address okay and once you provide that one you have to provide the wwpn number of your server okay and that machine will get registered over here okay let's cancel this wizard you can see all these machines are already available okay so in hpx host already one initiator is registered and zero runs are mapped so this way you can read this information then VMware API is also uh, inbuilt in this application. So you can perform vCenter, ESXi host, and virtual machine related activities from Unisphere application itself. Okay. Then let's move to the initiators. All initiator information will be getting over here. You can perform the deletion activity and a basic configuration stuff related to your initiator. Initiator is nothing but your HBA card information. Then in protection and mobility, we get a snapshot schedule. If you want to schedule a snapshot, okay, you can uh, create it from here, okay. So already default production, protection with shorted retention. Uh, then um, another schedule, metro sync snapshot. All the schedules are available over here. Then replication. In replication, uh, this is the resource. So this is the source LAN. Uh, which is replicated uh, to the destination LAN, okay, and asynchronous replication is going on, okay. So in connection, if we click, you can see our uh, Unity 48F is connected with Unity 380F and Unity 550F, okay. So between 480F and 380F, uh, synchronous replication is going on. And for uh, 550 and 480, asynchronous replication is going on. Okay, you can add additional storage boxes from here. Okay, then you can configure interfaces. Already over here, Ethernet port 0 of SPG and SPA is configured. If you want to configure additional ports, you can configure it from here. Port 1, port 2, port 3, like this. Okay. Then import also you can perform from here. So import option is also available. Then let's go to the alerts. System alerts you can see from here. So I for information, this time is for warning. 
then this uh, red one is uh, for critical and this one is for error okay so in critical you can see dp disk 21 has failed okay so this way storage will give you alert that this disk is failed okay and what is the error over here the system disk is inserted in the wrong slot okay so from this you can get the alert related information then jobs backend job information you can see like we did a storage pool creation and creation of a LAN. so you can see uh, those uh, job information is also available and it is completed successfully okay if you want to cancel any job you can cancel it anytime okay from here then logs you can manage logs you can see logs related to this storage box from here okay now let's go to the support which is last part of this overview video and in support you can see support forum option is there product portal uh, replace dry power supplies and other parts so from here itself you can order a part uh, to the Dell EMC okay and you'll get that one then you can download and um, a documentation option is also there so software download also you can perform this from this application additional uh, videos if you want to access you can access it uh, from here okay only the thing is you require username and password and shop Dell EMC products so let's visit this store if I click on this it will take us to Dell technologies and we'll get uh, you know all their product related information okay and uh, great and if you don't want to uh, call vendor okay if you want to do a chat you can perform the chatting also okay and you can create a service request okay so all these options are available in this application only okay so this is really good application and um, if you have any question any query any option you can leave a comment okay i will definitely happy to uh, answer your questions okay so like this video and uh, subscribe this channel hit the notification bell to get notified for the latest videos and uh, thank you for watching this video guys have a nice day hello there welcome to quickly learn in this video we are going to see what is hba and how it works in a storage environment let's get started So basically HBA stands for host bus adapter which we require to connect server with our storage box. So simple definition of the HBA it is it is an adapter which converts optical signal to digital signal. Okay so here you can see it is used to connect to block level storage such as fiber channel SATA and SCSI. Sometimes to the HBA we call it as a HBA card also. We add HBA card into the PCI slot of the motherboard. We get a different different uh, speed uh, HBA cards. Okay, so uh, in earlier days we used to get it with a speed 1 Gbps. Uh, we get our 2 Gbps, 4 Gbps, 8 Gbps and 16 Gbps HBA cards also. Okay, when we say Gbps it is the unit to measure the speed of a SAN infrastructure. So it stands for gigabit per second. Okay, and our uh, technology is uh, ready with the 128 gbps speed also okay so it depends whether you require that much speed hba card or not in san environment everything is identified by wwn number so when we say uh, wwn it is worldwide name and a simple definition of the wwn is it is a 64 bit 16 digit unique number assigned to the san device so whenever we purchase any SAN device, any storage box or any SAN switch, we get WWN number assigned to it. In WWN also, there are two uh, subtypes available. Okay, uh, it is WWNN and WWPN. Okay, so here you can see that WWNN, it stands for worldwide node name and WWPN number, it stands for worldwide port name. Okay, so what is the difference between node name and port name let's see that one 
in sign environment we get fc hbas of different different types okay so basically uh, single port hba card is available dual port hba card is available and quad port hba card is available if you see in single port let's say this is our hba card okay and one port is available that is fc port so for the entire card we get wwnn number that is worldwide node name okay and to the port we get a wwpn number okay so this number is different and this number is different if we uh, look at this dual port so this is our fc adapter that is hba card okay and here for the entire adapter one wwnn number is available and for each port unique wwpn number is available so in case of a dual port we get a single wwnn and two wwpn numbers in quad port wwnn for the entire card and uh, then for each port we get a unique wwpn number okay so to get a maximum redundancy at the server level we require two separate single port hba card okay if you want speed also then in, you can consider about you know dual port and the quad port also let's move to the next slide now you know about the uh, basic of the HBA. Okay, now when we fit the HBA into the server, how to get the WWPN number assigned to it? Okay, so depending on the operating system, uh, method is different, commands are different. Okay, so few of the commands uh, I am going to cover over here. Now, if you have a Solaris machine and HBA card is connected to it, to get the HBA information, you have to fire command FC info HBA port. Okay and this output will be visible now you can clearly see port number is given that is port wwn it is starting with 21 okay and this is complete 16 digit number okay and then node name is also available over here so node wwn it's starting over here with 20 okay the speed of uh, this particular output uh, hba it is 4 gb okay that means it is uh, giving maximum 4 gbps speed okay and supported speed is 1 gbps 2 gbps 4 gbps okay so complete information you get from this output um, about the hba then if you have aix machine okay so on aix machine command is fc stat and fcs0 so in aix basically this is the logical name of the hba card this is fiber channel scuzzy okay and if you have a uh, you know multiple ports uh, in that case you just have to give the uh, port number over here okay so in our case it is fcs0 now after firing this one you can see fiber channel statistics report it is fcs0 it is 8 gbps uh, supported port and uh, here uh, we get the wwnn okay that is starting with 20 and wwpn port number starting with 10 so this is also 16 digit this is also 16 digit unique number okay then if you have a linux machine then on a linux machine how to find the wwpn number of the hba so in a linux machine multiple methods are there okay if you want to get this output with a single command you have to install a systool uh, package and once it is installed you can fire this systool command so systool hyphen c fc underscore host hyphen v then pipe grep port name and this output will be visible to you okay so this way you can gather the wwpn number uh, from the linux and if you have a windows server then how to gather this information so in windows also from the command line uh, you can get this output by using the get hyphen initiator port okay and this way output will be visible you can see node address is available and port address is available okay so this is about hba and this knowledge is very important whenever uh, you work as a server admin or a storage admin or a backup admin you require a, a wwpn numbers so that your devices can communicate with each other okay so depending on a technology commands are different um, <clears throat> if you have any question any query uh, related to the hba card and uh, its information okay you can ask question in a comment box thank you guys for watching this video if you like this one click on a like button subscribe to our channel 
and press the notification bell icon so that you get a latest update video notification. Thank you. Hello there, welcome to quickly learn. In this video, we are going to cover zoning topic. If you are aware of the HBA and storage technology, then in a science age environment with the zoning, we can connect our server and the storage box. So let's deep dive into the zoning. Let's get started. So let's see what is zoning actually. Simple definition of the zoning is, it is a logical subset of physical devices to get access control, load balancing, security, and performance. So let me tell you one thing that in SAN environment, zoning is not compulsory. But if you have more than 100 devices, then you may require a zoning, okay? And once you create a zone for a single device, it is compulsory to create a zone for all the devices which are connected in a SAN environment. In zoning, there are three methods available. So first method is one to one, second method is one to many, and third method is many to many. In one to one, you can see HBA one and SPA port one, okay? So we can create a zoning between the HBA one and SPA port one. So in this diagram, you can see we have a server, okay? In the server, we have two HBA cards available. For redundancy purpose, we prefer to have two HBA cards. So HBA1 is connected to the SAN switch and HBA2 is also connected to the SAN switch. For better understanding, I have used only one SAN switch over here so that in coming examples, I'll be able to explain zoning uh, with an easy way, okay? And um, this is our storage box. In storage box, we have SPA and SPB part. So with SPA port one is available and with SPB port one is available, okay? So here you can see with one to one, HBA one, okay? So this HBA one and this port SPA port one, okay? We can do zoning. In one to many, HBA one, okay? Will be zoned with the SPA P1 and SPB P1, okay? So with these two ports, we can zone our single HBA card. Most of the time, if we have a standalone machine, so in that case, we go with the one to many method, okay? And uh, many to many method is also available where we add multiple HBA cards, okay? Into the zone, in this example, HBA1 and HBA2 are in a same zone and those are zoned with the SPA P1 and SPA, SPB P1, okay? So many to many zoning we use in case of a cluster, okay? So if you know about the cluster, uh, cluster, it is a collection of two or more nodes to achieve the high availability of application. And whenever you want to configure a cluster uh, at the storage level in a SAN switch level, we need to do the many to many zoning. Okay, let's move to the next slide. Then uh, in a zoning, uh, there are two types available. First type is a soft zoning and second type is the hard zoning okay and it is very easy to understand okay so you can see in a definition in a soft zoning we use wwpn of server hbas and storage port <coughs> storage ports okay so example over here let's say our server name is windows okay and uh, uh, we have decided to you know use uh, windows h1 underscore emc uh, as a zone name so in that case we will require wwpn of hba1 then WWPN of SPA P1 and WWPN of SPB P1. Okay, so for better understanding, I have used one to many zoning over here. Okay, so that method we are using. So same for the second zone also, win H2 underscore EMC. And in that WWPN of HBA2, WWPN of SPA P1 and WWPN of SPB P1 we have added. Okay, so in this example, you can see we have used the WWPN number of HBA, okay, and the storage ports, okay. So when we use uh, uh, these uh, ports actually, so we call it as a soft zoning. In market, 100%, in market, 100%, we go with the 
soft zoning only we don't go with the hard zoning but this is also uh, one of the important interview question what is soft zoning and hard zoning so you should know you know how to do the hard zoning and what is hard zoning actually so it's easy to understand in hard zoning we use wwpn number of sand switch ports wwpn okay so uh, basically uh, sand switch port wwpn number how do we use that one let's say our hba1 is connected to sand switch port 1 okay so let's say the number is s1 okay so in case of a hard zone uh, our zone name is a uh, win h1 underscore emc same name we are using over here only different wwpn numbers we are using in case of a hard zone okay so why s1 because our hba1 is connected to the first port of the sand switch then this spap1 okay is connected to the seventh port of the sand switch and this spb uh, p1 is connected to the eighth port of the sand switch same for the window h2 win h2 underscore emc so in this case uh, we are using wwpn number of sand switch port 2 okay so to the port 2 hba2 is connected okay and then s7 and s8 okay so it's very easy to understand in a soft zoning we use wwpn of server hbas and storage ports and in hard zoning we use wwpn of sand switch ports to which our hba and the storage ports are connected great let's move to the next slide so once you understand zoning okay uh, then zoning commands you should know okay so these commands uh, work on a broken sand switch okay so you can see uh, first command is zone create okay so syntax is very simple zone create then zone name and the members of the zone okay so in this case zone create win h1 underscore emc we are using the same name which we uh, used in the example okay and then uh, comma and in double quotes you can see wwpn of hba1 wwpn of spa1 and wwpn of spp p1 okay then create the second zone by using the zone create command win h2 underscore emc okay it should be in double quotes then comma then in double quotes wwpn of hba2 wwpn of spa p1 and wwpn of spp p1 we require okay so once these zones are connect uh, created we have to add that one in a configuration file okay so if it is a new setup in that case you have to create a configuration file and to create a configuration file command is cfg create okay so cfg create configuration file name in this case i've used uh, quickly learn config so ql config and uh, then i have added win h1 underscore emc so minimum one zone is required to create a configuration file once the configuration file is created okay no need to create the uh, another file to you know add another zone so you can use the same configuration file so cfg add and double quotes configuration file in this case ql config and then comma and in double quotes win h2 underscore emc so this way you can add your both zones into the configuration file okay once it is added okay so remember this one uh, whatever change you make into the configuration file compulsory you have to fire this command if you want to save that one so cfg save is the command okay so after firing cfg save whatever configuration we have created and added will be saved into the configuration file once it is saved you have to fire cfg enable command so cfg enable ql config uh, basically it will enable configuration file and our zones will be activated okay so whether it is activated or not we can check that one by firing cfg show command in cfg show it shows a defined configuration also and activated configuration also if you just want to see the activated configuration you can fire cfg actv show okay so these commands are useful whenever uh, you want to perform a zoning in a sand switch environment and remember this one it works on a brocade sand switches okay guys so if you like this video click on the like button subscribe to our youtube channel and uh, click on a notification bell icon 
so that you will get notified once the new video is uploaded thank you for watching